The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're coming to you live from the Warner Center in Woodland Hills, California. This is the home for Autism Live. It is also the home for the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. Thrilled to be here with you on this Thursday and big show for you today. A little bit out of the ordinary for us uh, that we've got guests that are all uh, running around the same thing. I think you're gonna be really excited to see uh, everybody that we have on the show today. Uh, but wanna remind you that we're gonna be live for the next two hours. You guys can be writing in your questions, your comments, your concerns. We love to hear from you and hear what you have to say. So Samantha's gonna show you some of the different ways that you can connect with us. While I remind you that our homepage is autism-live.com. When you go there, lots of things to do, but if you click on the triangle that's on the computer screen, it will start the either the live show playing or the most recently recorded live show playing. Now, if you wanna go back in time, you don't have to leave that website to do it. All you have to do is click on the memo tab that's in the upper left-hand corner of the computer screen and you can see the 100 most recent episodes that we did have uh, done here on the show. Now, to the side of all that is something that we call the live feature. It's a series of white boxes and one of them says your question, your comment. Uh, and if you put your cursor there, you type and you hit enter, it shows up here on my screen and you and I can have a conversation in real time. But better than that, you can have a conversation with our guests, which we absolutely love. I do like to remind you at the start of the show that we have tons of experts to give you uh, inspiration and information, right? But I am not one of the experts. That's not my, my deal. Uh, I am an autism mom, a very proud autism mom, and I officially this week am, am the proud mother of a 15-year-old. So we are well into the teenage years. I remember when I started this, I was shaking in my shoes about the whole teenage thing. And I, you know, like a lot of you, I get to listen to the experts and, and hear and get to hear from other moms who've been there and done that. And I have to say that the teenage thing is not as scary as I thought it was gonna be, but I came in more prepared than I had anticipated. So it's all good. Uh, but that is my area. I have been in this autism community now for 12 and a half years. That does not make me an expert. I just <laughs> want to be clear on that, that I am not an expert in autism. I, I'm somebody who's been around for a while, so I'm not uh, completely new to this, but I am passionate about helping you to get to the services and the help and the hope that you need to make progress, right? That's what it's all about here. So uh, in any case, we like to start every Thursday with something we fondly refer to as the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what are the experts talking about and what does it have to do with me? How is this going to save me money? You know, what's because if I'm going to have to learn a new thing, let me say that it's going to save time and money, right? And that's what our jargon terms do. So today's jargon term, one of our favorites, one of the most difficult things that there is to get your head completely wrapped around, perspective taking. Uh, you can tell how long somebody has been in the community by how trippingly this rolls off of their tongue. If you're talking to somebody and they say, well, you know, it's just a matter of perspective taking, you know they've been around for a while, right? That is not a first week kind of situation <laughs> that somebody goes, oh yeah, perspective taking. But um, it's, uh, let's take a look at what our actual definition is. Uh, perspective taking is the ability to perceive someone else's thoughts, 
feelings and motivations. As definitions go, you know, I always like to say that we like to make fun of our definitions, but this one, not much to make fun of, right? It's pretty accessible. The ability to perceive someone else's thoughts, feelings, and motivations. But let's water it down just a little bit, make it easier. Um, and so our, ac- our working definition is being able to see things from someone else's point of view. Now, can you imagine if this is not something that you're able to do? If you are moving through life and you are a completely contained human being and you are the star of your show, right? And your expectation, and this happens, all kids come out of the womb and feel this, that it's about me and I don't, I don't know that you guys all have something going on in your head that is also another show and that you're the star of your show. Kids aren't, babies aren't born with that, right? But it develops somewhere before the age of five. This ability to realize that I have a whole world going on here, but you have a whole world going on inside your head and how I see it and how you see it are different. And that's perspective taking. It encompasses a lot of things um, because it isn't just, um, it's not black and white. There's lots of different ways and there's inference, but perspective taking, being able to recognize that somebody else is seeing it a different way and perhaps even put yourself at least for a moment in their shoes to see what it looks like, right? Some people are better at this than other, but one of the things that was very eye-opening for the autism community was uh, when I always, it's uh, Simon Baron Cohen. I always want to say Sasha Baron Cohen, but it's his cousin. Simon Baron Cohen did a study and came up with the Sally Ann test. And this really, I remember hearing about this when my son had been diagnosed probably a year and I was like, what? Uh, this is this is so enlightening because it knows it, it tells us what area we need to work on. So they had three groups of kids. They had kids that were completely developing. Typically, they had kids that were uh, Down syndrome, and they had kids that were on the autism spectrum. They were all past the age where perspective taking should have started to kick in. They told them a story about Sally and Anne. Uh, and I always get confused who's Sally and who's Ann, but two little girls and they're in a room together and they give a ball to one of them and they say, go hide it. And she puts it in a basket and then she leaves. They say to the other child, take the ball, move it someplace else. She takes the ball and moves it behind a table. And they say to the child taking the test, the girl who's out in the hallway, where is she going to say the ball is? Okay, so the task, really what we're looking to see is, can you acknowledge that the girl who's out in the hallway does not have, she's not privy to the information that the ball got moved again? Can you put that together without somebody lining it out for you? And what they found across the board was that the kids who were neurotypical absolutely were able to say that even though they knew the ball was behind the table, that the girl in the hallway doesn't know that she's going to say it's in the basket. That's the last place she saw it, right? And we would expect that from the neurotypical kids. That, that was the expectation. The kids with Down syndrome were able to say that as well. Even with the things going on with Down syndrome, they were able to perspective take and realize she doesn't know that. The kids with autism weren't able to discern that. They overwhelmingly said, she's going to think it's behind the table. Now, this is devastating because you go, oh, this is where some of the gap is with our kids. But you know, knowledge is power. And so for the last, since that study was done, People have been working on this to see, can you teach perspective taking? And guess what? The fabulous news is you can. You absolutely can. CARD's been doing it for over a decade. I watched when they did this with my son. It works. They work on it in a very specific way. They start with teaching the senses, and then they start with sensory perspective taking, and then they move into understanding um, lies and white lies and being and beliefs what you what you think and what you believe uh what is known and what is opinion all of those things are needed to be able to get to the point where you can finally take on 
true perspective taking. Um, all of the lessons for it are in skills. So uh, you can check that out if you want to. You can go to skillsforautism.com. Uh, but perspective taking, when, when a, uh, a kiddo on the spectrum gets to the point where perspective taking kicks in, it's, you know, it, it is a huge leap for them. Um, so often people say wrongly that people on the spectrum have no empathy. That's not true. They're missing the perspective taking, and when you put the perspective taking in, there's some of the more, more empathetic people on the face of the planet. So uh, really, really important skill to do. There was a, a dad that I remember years ago, and he said to me, um, they were doing something with him where it was his birthday, and somebody gave him a straw. It was like a joke, I guess. And, and so it was like an aunt who said, here, I got you something. You know, here's a straw for you. And he said, oh, thank you so much. It's just exactly what I wanted. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And everybody was sort of laughing. And, and dad said to him, you know, why are you thanking her for the straw? And he said, because if she's going to give me a gift, she's taken the time to get the gift and, you know, she's going to care how I receive it. So I want to, well, that's perspective taking, right? Then they had to explain to him sarcasm, right? <laughs> that the aunt was being sarcastic because she hadn't gotten him a gift yet. But, you know, that perspective taking, huge leap, huge, huge, huge leap. And you will see that a lot makes more sense socially once you get the perspective taken there. Again, the lessons are in skills. It's so super duper important that you do the prerequisites before you can't just leap in and do perspective taking. Uh, you gotta do all the prerequisites. They're fun though. I so remember being at the table when my son was doing his sensory perspective taking um, because we had to get a bunch of things that felt different ways and smelled different ways and made different sounds and uh, you know, every, every uh, time he would be doing the lessons, I'd be cutting up lemons so that, and I'd be putting cinnamon in one cup so that he could smell something. And, and of course, they start with that just teaching them their senses. What can you smell? I smell lemon, right? And then later on, uh, they put up, there's things called barrier games where they put up a barrier. And I so remember because it gets so exciting when the light bulbs go on for your kid. They, they put up a barrier on our table that we had uh, where my son did therapy, and uh, at least part of his therapy, and they had a car on one side of the barrier. And I was on one side of the barrier, my son was, and the therapist were on the other side. And I remember Peter Farrig saying to my son, what can you see? But he see, he'd already learned what, you know, what the sense of seeing is. And he said, I see a yellow car. And, yellow car, Peter, I see a yellow car. And, and um, and then Peter would say to him, what does mom see? And he would say, mom see yellow car, <laughs> right? And Peter would say, does she? And he would walk him over to the other side of the barrier and he would say, sit where mom sits. Can you see the car? And I remember in the beginning, my son was like, well, where's the car? And Peter would say, see, you can't see it because this barrier is in the way. And Jem would go around the other side and he could see the car. And we did it like, you know, 10 times but I watched him get it. And he was like, oh, she can't see the car from where, it made him a better artist, right? Uh, that his drawing like went in that moment because he was like, oh, your eyes can only see this. That hadn't occurred to him before that. I'm telling you, it, it was so, ex it was watching a miracle to see him get it. And that became a building block to so many more things. So perspective taking, huge. If you've got a kid who doesn't care when somebody else is hurt, this is how you get there. Through this long step of lessons, it takes a while. Don't expect to do it in six weeks, right? This is a year, two year, three year process, uh, but it can be taught successfully. Perspective taking. It is an awesome, awesome thing. Okay, moving on. We always have a question of the day for you. Our question today, what's your strongest sense? Now, if you think about this, we've talked before about how everybody has a different love language and that you could be working overtime to make somebody feel loved, um, but often we will 
not take perspective and think about what do they want, we'll think about what makes me feel loved, right? So if you like to be showered with gifts, often you will shower the person you love with gifts, right? But if that's not how they feel loved, that's time wasted and money wasted, right? It's kind of the same thing with senses, uh, that I know this as a teacher that often we teach to whatever our strongest sense is. And if you can know what your student's strongest sense is, man, oh man, can you be a good teacher, right? That for, for me, my strongest sense is visual. I am a visual thinker. I am a visual person. I got to see it. You yakking at me and telling me something, not so much, right? I just don't learn that way. I got to see it on a piece of paper. I have almost photographic memory if I can see it on a piece of paper. Um, my son is a visual person also, but he's a concept person. So I would say that visual is his strongest sense, but I have to know as his teacher that I can't just show him visuals. I got to give him the concept. And once he has the concept, man, he can do it, right? So what is your strongest sense? What is the best way to teach you? And then think about who you would like to learn something and ask yourself, what is their strongest sense? And if you don't know, find out because it can enlighten everything, right? So what is your strongest sense? All right, moving on. We always have a topic of the week and I love this topic this week. It's autism and the art. Uh, we've got guests lined up for you from beginning to end for the, this next hour and 45 minutes now uh, that are all people that are working in the field of autism and the arts. So that's a very excited thing. First thing up, we have uh, Connor Haney, who is a young writer and director who ha is directing a musical called Best Buddies, the hip hop musical. So he's going to be with us to talk about that with an inclusive cast. Uh, a little bit later on, after, right after that, we're going to have Dancing Dan Watt join us, and he is for uh, doing a documentary about ballet for all kids, which I think you're going to find interesting, and there's a way that you can help out to make sure that this documentary gets made. And then we have a cavalcade of people that are going to join us from Camp Ed. I've got my Camp Ed pin on here. I don't know if you can see it. It is a safety pin with a bottle cap underneath of it because of the, the film Up. And of course, Ed is Ed Asner. And the Ed Asner Center, Family Center, is it Ed Asner Family, what does it say on it? For excellence, right? Uh, the Ed Asner Family Center. I think th it used to have the word ex excellence in it. I think it's just implied now. In any case, uh, they are, they've started something new that's been in the works for quite a while. And the kickoff, the soft kickoff, is Camp Ed this summer. So we've got Joanne Lara from Autism Movement Therapy. We've got Garth Herberg from Spectrum Laboratory. We have Nava Paskowitz from the Ed Asner Family Center. And Matt Asner is going to join us, too, to talk about his dad's legacy. All of that and a bunch, bunch more coming up. Don't go anywhere because you're going to love, love, love it. Stick with us. Welcome back. For the month of June, I figured we'd do some cool things that are kind of like summer camp activities. So the activity we're doing this month is making a shoebox guitar. The materials you'll be needing are an old shoebox, a paper towel roll, a pencil, a stencil, rubber band, a crayon, and an exacto blade, which only the adults will be using. So first things first, I have a shoebox and I painted it just so it's a little bit more interesting. This is an opportunity for your kids to decorate however they choose. They can keep it simple or do some stripes with paint, or you can always use you know, stickers or tape instead of paint to decorate it. All right, now that I have this, I'm gonna take my stencil, place it on top of the shoebox, and I'm gonna draw a circle somewhere in the center, okay? So now that I have that, I'm gonna take my X-Acto blade, which is why this is for the adults, and cut out the circle. Next, we're gonna cut out a smaller circle at the top of our shoebox guitar. The reason we're going to do this is so that we have a place to insert our paper towel roll, AKA the stem of the guitar. And I'm gonna grab my paper towel roll and I'm gonna trace the outside of this so I can cut a hole on the top of this too to stick this in so it just looks a lot more realistic. It won't be usable, but it'll look pretty cool. Now that it's been traced, now I'm gonna cut it out with the X-Acto blade. And again, this is something that only the adults should be doing. 
Now that I have both of the holes cut in this, I'm gonna take my guitar strings and place them on. As you can see, it's missing one thing. It's stem, so now I'm gonna put this in the hole we just cut out. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crayon and put this in. And then after that, your guitar is totally done and you're ready to rock out with your kids. And if you're really cool, you'll make another one so you and your child can play together while doing social dramatic play or work on imitation skills where you play a pattern on here and then they try to repeat it. I hope you and your child had lots of fun making this. And until next time, rock on. Can you see me flying by your side? I lied. I want to come back and just answer a couple of questions and then we're going to have Connor with us. So uh, first of all, a couple of shout outs. Luis from Mexico, Sir Juan from Ghana, and somebody is watching from Valencia. Thank you so much. We'd love to hear where you guys are watching from. It's very exciting for me. I'm geographically challenged and so it makes me happy. Um, also want to say jo Johanny has written in and said summer is coming and I'm terrified I'm going to lose control of what I currently have. My five-year-old son will continue school three days a week and will continue his therapies, but I still want to have fun. And I just want to say to you that uh, this is a thing where Nancy and I always, like, we have a completely different reaction to this. We had, had this on the show a couple of weeks ago where Nancy said, oh, I dread it when school gets out. And I said, what are you talking about? It's my favorite. I, I mean, I'm like counting down the minutes until my son is done. Um, learning, I think, if you have the right attitude about it, explodes during the summer because you get more opportunity to make it fun. So for me, this is just a mental shift of saying, okay, every waking minute, we're gonna be trying to do something that's learning, but we're only going to put it in the fun category. So that when you're in the swimming pool, and if you don't know how to do this, and, I, and Nancy always says to me, Shannon, you're an ex-teacher, so this comes naturally to you and it does not come naturally to the rest of us. But I would say to you, you must know someone who's a teacher. Call them or write them, and if you can't, if you absolutely know knows no one, then call or write me, and let's sort it out. Because all you have to do is make a schedule and kind of stick to it, and and have that mental shift. So that, for instance, if you're in line at the ATM and you're waiting to get to the ATM, it's an opportunity. Now, it depends on what you're working on currently with your child, and if you're in an ABA program, ask your ABA supervisor, what kinds of things can I work, be working on in all kinds of situations? Um, I remember saying at one point, I was like, you know, we're in the car a lot. What can I be working on in the car? And they gave me like 10 different things to work on in the car. That, you know, when, on the week when we were learning what green was and we were trying to generalize it, we would play a game back and forth of what can you see that's green and so we were learning um first of all turn taking right we were counting the points so we were counting and we were pointing out things that were green and within four days he generalized green and he can recognize green for the rest of his life right while you're in line at the atm one of my favorite things because it was a go-to and you can make it educational no matter what is playing i spy and then you can fill in whatever the thing is that you're working on. So I spy uh, something that's blue or I spy something that's a vehicle or I spy something that has um, 13 different parts on it, right? You can make it whatever you want. We worked on things in the pool. We went to museums. We gave our program legs. We took therapists with us. Wherever we were, we were working on whatever. And, it, and if it makes it easier for you, say, what are the 10 things that we're working on and how can I put this out in natural environment to your supervisor? And like I said, if you don't have one of those, write to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you to figure it out because it's so, so powerful. The question is not, can you uh, educate your child during the summer uh, or, or should you have fun? It's put the two together. That's what I want to give you guys because it's amazing. Uh, and uh, Starless Moon says, would ABA be helpful? I can't get it to come up. Uh, for a 12-year-old boy that struggles with self-control inside the classroom. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, but I'll tell you, one of the keys to this, and it's a perfect time, is that self-control within the classroom has to start with self-control 
that's not in the classroom. Because when you're in the classroom, there's so much going on. So we want to get it together outside the classroom first. Then we want to simulate um, circumstances that have classroom-like behaviors um, so that we can get that self-control together and then give them the opportunity in the classroom. You can get this taken care of over the summer and ABA would be fabulous for this, absolutely fabulous. Uh, I want to encourage you to do that. It will make such a, such a, such a difference. All right, we're taking a break. We're coming back with Connor Haney. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Lisa Ackerman. Welcome back to another Talk of Fact. We bring you the most common questions and, and share those answers that help your journey um, and along for you and your family. One of the most common questions we hear all the time is, why are these doctors working with kids on the autism spectrum so expensive? Well, there's a simple answer. Kids with autism take more time. And unfortunately, if you look at a regular pediatrician's practice, they may see anywhere from 30 to 60 patients every day. So you may get at most three to five minutes with those, um, those doctors. With doctors that specialize in autism, they're called MAPS doctors, the Medical Academy of Pediatric Special Needs. They spend quite more time with each family and each patient. And that could be an hour to an hour and a half for each family that is actually being spent just talking about your child, looking at labs. So why are they more expensive? Well, your pediatrician probably gets paid a lot more per hour based on the number of people they see. A MedMaps doctor is solely dedicated to what you're doing and what your child needs. So look at it this way. If you're spending time with your MedMaps doc and you're working with that doc and it, you will literally on average see somewhere between four to seven hours per year. And then don't forget that other fact we talked about, how to get the best possible health care reimbursement so you can make sure that that time is well spent, not only getting answers but also reimbursed by health insurance. So there, another very detailed long fact um, from Talk of Facts. Welcome back to Autism Live. Today we're talking about the arts and how amazing having some place to go where you get to express yourself artistically can help an individual with different abilities. So I'm so excited. Our next guest is Connor Haney and he is joining us here. Uh, he is the writer director of, of Best Buddies, the hip hop musical, which just did its first preview at the Hollywood Fringe Festival and is getting ready to open at the Hollywood Fringe. So Connor, first of all, welcome and thank you for being with us. Hi, thanks for having me. And so uh, you previewed the other day. When do you actually hard open? When is your opening night? Our opening night is actually a matinee Sunday, June 10th at 1 p.m. And it's at the Broadwater Second Stage on Theater Row right around uh, Santa Monica and Vine in Hollywood. Fabulous. And so uh, you've written many musicals. What made you decide to write this musical, Best Buddies? Sure. So uh, I've been working with the... Uh, cognitively disabled community for the last uh, decade or so, starting with this camp called Camp I'm Special back in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, had uh, been writing uh, content for individuals with uh, special needs that are, you know, cognitively within the 6 to 14 demo by, by virtue of my uh, work uh, at, at Disney Channel and DreamWorks, and now I'm over on this uh, Netflix show called Prince Peoria that'll drop in the fall, but uh, had only recently, within the last couple of years, starting writing content featuring individuals with disabilities. I uh, had I'm in the Writers with Disabilities Committee over at the WGA, and I work with this theater company in North Hollywood for um, actors with uh, Down syndrome and, and special needs uh, that um, uh, I had uh, basically cast this musical through uh, with the help of uh, Gail Williamson at KMR Talent. We love Gail, and we're, we're very familiar with many of her clients. So let's mm -hmm. talk about who is in your cast, because you have a very sure. rich and diverse cast. Yeah, so we've got, uh, you can go alphabetically if you want, we got this guy, Jacob Braun. He, uh, he plays Jacob. Everyone plays uh, not themselves, but sort of heightened versions of themselves. He's, it's set in a high school, and so they're playing... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, these just fun uh, caricatures that are leaning into their strengths and idiosyncrasies and eccentricities. Um, we got Jacob Braun, 
Uh, we have Shannon Dierix, Chloe Houghton, uh, Craig Jaffe, uh, John Tucker, JT, who's on uh, Born This Way on A&E. Wonderful. And and then, uh, oh, go ahead. Keep going. No, uh, then on our uh, neurotypical side of the cast, it's just folks from my previous musicals, Divorce the Hip Hop Musical and Stranger Things, the musical tribute. Uh, we've got uh, Kelsey Gores, Ike Woodcraft, my brother, Kevin Haney, uh, t- uh, Gabe Greenspan, and Callie Ott. Okay, and, and I love this idea of inclusive theater. I think it's where we all need to get to, of course. Um, but was so this isn't your first time then directing a show with individuals with very diverse abilities. Is that correct? Or was this the first time? Uh, in a at something at this scale, it's definitely it's definitely a first. You know, we've been rehearsing since January weekly uh, to do this, you know, hour long musical with uh, 12 original songs and there's no um you know, I, I'm I'm directing it, but I'm very I'm you know I'm not even backstage. I'm not sitting front row. I'm not feeding lines. It's all you know, uh, self-contained and and delivered and sort of whatever happens happens. Um, but it, yeah, we uh, yeah started rehearsing in January. I wrote it in December, but but previous to that, with Gail's help, had actually precast um, every uh, neurodiverse individual in the cast, and then done these sort of extensive long form interviews with them at their respective homes in North Ridge and West Hills, Englewood, Santa Ana, and Anaheim, just to learn their uh, speech patterns and uh, lexicon and just write the characters and uh, dialogue for them specifically, just to sort of um, uh, less steepen the learning curve. And what do you hope audiences will get from this, Connor? I'm really hoping that they are just... Yeah, entertained independent of the inclusivity. Like, you know, it it, it would be great for them to just, you know, find it empirically, you know, hilarious and find the characters, you know, uh, uh, fun and endearing without the, you know, the caveat of, you know, for a show that's inclusive. Right. uh, Just to, yeah, to, yeah, sort of entertain independent of that, just letting it uh, inform the the conversation thereafter and the experience during not monopolizing it, but just sort of going in in direction that I hope, you know, society can go, which is like a, you know, a, uh, a, a perfect comfortability and uh, a perfect proportional integration. Yeah. It's a piece of art. You want it to stand on its own and, yeah. and uh, exactly. I understand completely. So let's talk a little bit about when people can see this and how they can see it. So you're opening on, June 10th at the Broadwater mm-hmm. Theater as part of the Hollywood Fringe, and that's at 1 o'clock. When are your other performances mm-hmm. throughout the month? We're also doing then the following weekend a, a Saturday night show, Saturday, June 16th at 8 p.m., and then the following day another Sunday matinee, June 17th at 2 p.m., and then the next weekend, uh, Saturday, June 23rd, another 8 p.m. Uh, evening show, and then the next Sunday, June 24th at uh, another 2 p.m. matinee to close us out. Okay, it sounds fabulous. And, I, you know, we've been talking on the show because I also have a show at the Fringe. And on the 10th, you could come and see my show, if you already have tickets, at 11 o'clock and then grab a quick bite to eat and stick around mm-hmm. to see Best Buddies, the hip-hop musical, and be able to do that. So, you know, I would encourage you to do that. That would be a wonderful way to spend uh, a Sunday afternoon. Connor, you mentioned that you're, uh, you we caught you at a lunch break. Uh, you're at Netflix right now. Tell us a little bit about the show that you said is dropping in the fall. Uh, it's called Prince of Peoria. It's uh, one of Netflix's first uh, live-action tween sitcoms that they're doing. And, and uh, it's... Uh, from Nick Stanton and Devin Bungie, who are the creators of Gamer's Guide to pretty much everything over on Disney XD. That I, I work for them over there. And, yeah, it's a, a, a brother program to um, Alexa and Katie, which they, a couple months ago, but ours is uh, skewing more uh, male, targeting uh, the 6 to 14 demo, but more specifically 8 to 12-year-old boys. So it should be just, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of fun. So there's a fabulous a lot of yeah cool fun stunts and set pieces we'll check it out i didn't ask you but uh is is uh, best buddies the hip-hop musical is it family friendly what age can people bring to the theater yeah um uh, a lot of folks have been bringing kids we had a 
uh, three-year-old in the audience the other day. You know, it's it's like PG, PG-13, no F-bombs, no sexual situations, really. It's, you know, it's set in a, a high school, not sanitized by any means, and there's some language here and there, but yeah. Okay, friendly, friendly. fabulous. And we showed on the screen, you can go to uh, hollywoodfringe.org, and when you go there, what you want to do is search... Uh, you can search by musical or you can search by the name Best Buddies and you will be able to find it and make your reservation to have tickets. We do caution everyone that if you're going to the Hollywood Fringe, parking is a, a challenge, right, Connor? Yeah. Uh, so get there early. Shows do start exactly on time. They don't hold the curtain. So you want to make sure that you get there in plenty of time. It's playing at the Broadwater Theater at the second stage. Definitely give your time and attention to this fabulous show. Connor, I think it's amazing what you're doing. Thanks, Shannon. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you Thanks for having so me. much. All right, you take care. Have a great we'll opening. We'll do. All right, we're going to be back with more after these messages. Stick with us. My name is Nancy Allspaugh Jackson. I'm the executive director of Act Today, and I'm here to support this amazing cause for military families with children with autism. Uh, most military families move on average every two years. Oftentimes, they have a parent who's deployed. With one in 68 military children being diagnosed with autism, it's just more critical than ever that we give them the support they need for care and services. This is the eighth year of our run. It's always a great event for the San Diego community, the fitness community, and the military community to come out and support military children with autism. It's so nice to see so many people out here this morning, uh, not only providing their support morally and emotionally for these families, but financially, and so they're raising a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars. It all goes to treatment and some of the things that these families not may not otherwise be able to, to afford and so we're just proud to be a part of it. It's There's a children's race as well and it's all kinds of fun too that's mixed up in it all. This is our eighth year being the title sponsor of the One Hope Act Today Family 5K, 10K Family Festival. And we believe doing good is doing good business. The main thing that we're out here today is because of our Cabernet Supports Act Today. And with our Cabernet, we donate back towards Act Today. And we've donated over 2,000 hours of ABA therapy. Me and Gunny Gitmo came all the way out here from Palm Springs to support this because we do have a son that has autism. And so we come out here to do the support for it all the time. We do a lot of fundraisers out in Palm Springs also. We had a huge Stroller Warriors group out here. I run with Stroller Warriors Miramar. We had a bunch of ladies run their first ever 10K today. It was amazing. Um, and uh, I have a personal connection to autism. My son Ethan has autism. I'm in the Navy and I ran the uh, inaugural Act Today 5K back in 2011, I think it was. And so every time I come back to San Diego, I try and make it around this time so I can run this race. I'm a 14-year military spouse who has been through four deployments with my husband. <laughs> He's running today right now, so I'm just very happy to be here. Anytime an organization is out here helping military families, I'm always here to support because they're here to help families like me. My name is Liam. Who did you say you wanted to be like? I just wanted to be like Mikhail Bergkopf, my <laughs> hero. Uh, I'm not sure if they got the whole thing, but I was, I was at this performance. Oh, here I am. I'm a little intermediate still, so that's my story in ballet, and it's a little other things about me. Step, step, step. Now pull up, Sarah. Now switch. Kind of miraculous, the 
progress I've made with Bonnie because when I first came to her, I couldn't walk across the studio floor without falling over. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Yes! Yeah, that's all right. Let's try again. I was actually diagnosed with CMT, which I am pray to God that it's not that because it's a degenerative nerve disease. I was really heartbroken. I mean, I broke down to Bonnie. I broke down to my physical therapist. Nerve connection from my brain to my legs isn't very up to date. It needs an upgrading. <laughs> Sometimes I feel there's just too much joy inside of me and I, can't, and I have to do something about it, so I dance. So many of these kids, and I would say more of their parents, they never thought that their children would get the opportunity to perform. And every, every parent wants to see their child prosper and, and be happy and have the same opportunities as any kid. So to have them on stage is a huge goal for, for so many families. Impossible, they thought for so long. Like there is an entire human being behind and within this. Good job, can I hear you all clap? Good job, stickers. That's everybody, sticker. everybody has some sort of access point that once we connect with that, we can, we can just use it as a springboard for everything else. We're just sitting here sighing over how beautiful those little faces are, right? Aren't they? Thank yeah, you so amazing. much. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, I want to introduce you to everybody. This is Dancing Dan Watt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Isn't that yeah. that's what everybody calls you? It dancing, dancing Dan. Dancing yeah, Dan. Dancing Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fabulous thing. And you are uh, in the midst of producing a documentary that's ballet for all kids and documenting what this amazing thing can do. Talk to us about what the mission is and what it is that you want, guys want to accomplish. Well, what I was doing, uh, doing is uh, I wanted to document how the arts help kids. Yeah. And I used to teach uh, dance about 15 years ago and I taught two autistic girls and treated them like any, anybody else in the class. Yeah. They were just two other girls. And um, I had a dream about them. And I thought, why am I dreaming about these girls 15 years later? And then I had another dream about them. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's a message. Th yeah. that things like that don't just pop into your head. So I was, to, that to me was my sign of what my documentary should be. So I started doing research on how dance, because I used to be a dancer and a dance teacher, helps kids with different developmental disabilities. And I found this school up here in the valley called Ballet for All Kids. So I went and observed the class and I fell in love with Bonnie, uh, the founder, and also all the kids. And I said, you know, I'd love to document these kids and their journey and how what they learn in dance, the discipline, um, you know, repetitiveness, all that stuff and how it helps them with self-esteem and all that. And she said, well, next week I'm making the announcement that we're doing a recital. And I was like, in a week. <laughs> yeah. So I put a camera crew together. I wanted to be there for that announcement and then just capture the kids' journey from that point on. Okay. For, you know, so the, the journey of the kids and the families and uh, the parents and the kids are, are just so supportive. Yeah. We go to their houses and go out to dinner with them, out to lunch, and we just then explore their journey of what they've learned and how they can apply it in everyday life. But then the cherry on the cake is, at the end of the documentary, we get to see them perform. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And so where, where are you in, in terms of making the documentary now? Well, we're, we just finished filming the recital. Okay. So we've got that under, under our belt. But we're at the point now where it, it just costs so much for editing and for, uh, music rights get a composer to tie it all together there's all the you know there's yeah. the post production production expenses and that's where we're at right now and I, I we just need funding to finish it and um, I had talked to a few people about it and what is really really interesting and touching right now is I, I'm getting a lot of response from kids yeah. and there was a school in Orange County uh, called the Golden Elementary School, and the teacher's name is Anne Ragu, and it's second grade. And she saw 
the clip that you just showed. Right. And they put on a dance-a-thon at the school to raise money to oh, finish nice. the movie. Oh, nice. And it was just, I went down there and watched and it was just so heartfelt and the kids were just so adorable and so into it each one of them made a poster or a card for me mm. and one of the girls wrote drew these ballerinas and she said all kids should dance yeah is this the what she said yeah well and then that, that's another adorable one okay. where if you look where it is it, the, her last line is it is it is important because different kids have different needs and oh. I, it's just Absolute, heartwarming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got in the car and I cried. Yeah. And, and they, they raised money. And now because of that, there's a dance studio in Ohio co called um, Studio 82. Uh -huh. It's in North Royalton or Strongsville, something like that. And they're now going to do uh, a dance fundraiser, part of their summer program. Oh. So it's just, I think it's just so cool that it's kids supporting kids. Yes. And I thought, what a great way if there's... Girl Scout troops, Brownie troops, yeah. Boy Scouts, other dance studios to just do that. And then this movie is finished because kids supported kids. Yeah. I, I just, I get, I'm getting teary eyed again. Oh right my now. gosh, I'm, I just, I'm already I can't, teary eyed. I just. Well, it's a, and you have to know when you get that kind of affirmation that you're doing something really good and really relevant and important. If kids are saying, I want to support to get this done, that's. You know that you have to know that you're doing the right thing, right? Well, I, I think so. I, I I truly think so. And I think the a big turning point for me was at the holiday time, uh -huh. and I, I was shopping at Target, and I'd been filming the kids since uh, September or August or September, and I'm walking through doing my shopping, and there was this girl having a little conniption uh -huh. on the floor, and her mom there, and I walked by with my cart, and I thought. I wonder if she's on the spectrum. Uh -huh. And I just kept shopping. And then it hit me. I thought, look how your thoughts changed. I didn't judge the girl. I didn't go, what a brat. I didn't right. judge the mom and go, what is wrong with this mom? Why is she not disciplining her kid? Yeah. The thought that popped in my head was, oh, I wonder if she's on the spectrum. Yeah. And I thought, that's the message of this movie. Mm. Me just being around them for the months that I was around them and being aware and educated and going out to lunch with these kids and their parents and I thought that's it. That's yeah. the message. That's what I need to get across to America and the world with this movie is that it's powerful. Yeah. Very that, powerful. Yeah. We always talk about awareness and um, but you know it's hard to get to. It's really hard to get to, but we all see that film is a medium that enlightens. It really does. Mm -hmm. That most people are willing to sit down and watch something if it's entertaining for a few minutes. And I don't know what's more entertaining than kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and and kids learning how to dance. I mean, let's be honest. It's like cat videos. We're drawn to yes. it, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like you can't hardly <laughs> up. I mean, when we just, you know, a few minutes ago, you and I were talking, and uh, you and I both have seen that clip before, but mm -hmm. we totally stopped talking and were engrossed. Yeah. Because to see the emotions on the kids' faces and to see how happy they are and how engaged they are, it's sort of impossible to look away. Yeah. And it's a positive thing. How many negative things are out there? This is a positive thing. What an amazing thing that you're doing. But so how, Dan, for people that are watching who maybe don't mm -hmm. have a dance studio, is there, the way, is there a way that they can contribute and can help? Um, are you taking donations from run-of-the-mill people? Yeah, anybody can donate. If you go to um, the, there's a longer clip uh, than the one that we showed you for time purposes. It's at dancingdanproductions.com. Okay. And um, you can donate there. And we got a nonprofit organization called the Art Attack Foundation who is accepting all the donations and overlooking the funds and controlling it. And what is amazing is that there, you know, you can do a Kickstarter. There's all those things that I was thinking about, right. you know, how to raise money. And, and those are all valuable and important things to do. But there's fees involved, and yeah. there's other nonprofits that will come on and support you for yeah. their fee, and they go between nine percent and thirteen yeah. percent. The Art Attack Foundation is taking zero. That's wonderful. So all money donated goes to 
finishing the movie. That's amazing. A and I just, you know, and again, to have the the support because people have seen the footage of these yeah. adorable kids and you make a $10 donation. What Talking about, again, those kids in, in Orange County and, yeah. and the second graders, after they they went out with their I guess their little forms and you know asked their neighbors <laughs> and their you know and you know grandma you know there were a few right. names where you could see grandma wrote the check and right. mom wrote a check but they loved the project. A little boy came up to me and gave me the change in his pocket. Aww. He goes, "Here's a little more that I have today," Aww. and I was like, oh. "And I said, well, honey, that's your lunch money." He goes, "No, no, I brought my lunch." <laughs> That's so sweet. Just, yeah, so anybody can donate, and okay. that's where it's like, you know, is there a Girl Scout troop that would do a fundraiser? You right. know, you raise fifty bucks, you donate ten, you raise five thousand. I mean, right. you know, it's just, it's all good. It's just to get the stories of these absolutely amazing kids told, and yes. and I think it, it, it needs to be told, and and I think be and not, yeah. not just the awareness because. This also changed with me. You know, there was, uh, April was Autism Awareness Month. Uh, but is it awareness, or are we at the point now that it's all acceptance? Exactly. You know, so it's... Exactly. Because everybody's aware. So now I think we need to get to that point of acceptance. acceptance. And these kids, they're dancing. They're yeah. doing a dance recital. Yeah. like. Like all dance studios should do. Right. They take class, and then they do their recital. Yeah. And they have to practice at home. Yeah. And then being a former dancer, you know, it was my discipline that I learned in class. I did. I used for doing homework, doing everything, you know, yeah. creating a schedule. Da, 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 da. And that's what these kids do that and with their sense. parents, you know. Amazing, and so we, we in in the footage that you have, we get to see all the ways this is affecting the rest of their life as well. Exactly, we do one on ones at the homes. We got some amazing, amazing parents who sat down with me and grandparents who uh, shared their stories. Yeah, you know, um, some moms and dads. There's one father who shared. It, it's in the. It, it'll be in the clip. Uh, uh -huh. on my website on, okay. on Dance and Dan Productions where he talks about what it was like for him. You have a, a, a kid who's autistic, but then you have a, um, a son who's autistic who wants to take ballet. Mm -hmm. So there's that, oh, my son wants to take ballet. And then you, he took him to the class and saw how excited he was yeah. and how it just made him light up and then how everything in his life I hate to say got better, but he, you know, with the discipline yeah. and the self, you know, everything just blossomed. Yeah. That the, you know, for the father to share that story and say that, you know, look yeah. how this has changed my son's life. Remarkable. And how that then opened his heart even more. So right. it's just. Which know, then becomes a domino effect for, for everything everybody. because then he's talking about it in the film. And, you know, we know that there are dads who need to see that. Right, exactly. That they need to see and understand that what they're feeling, that they're not alone, and that that's a feeling that you can move through. Right. Uh, you know, the whole idea of seeing your kid for tr who they truly are in all their splendor and all their glory and accepting who that little person is, mm -hmm. which whenever we see, I mean, our whole program today is about the arts and, and autism and how the arts support our kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm i a, a, a big proponent of the arts, period, whether it's autism or something else, because uh -huh. I think that everyone needs to have art. It, it's what defines a society, right? right? Oh, definitely. Um, and, and it's a way in which we can agree when we don't agree. We can experience something together. It brings us back to our humanity. It allows us to have our emotions. It's I, I loved when um, Guillermo de Toro said, at the Academy Awards this year, he got up and he said, for those of you who think that you can't tell the stories about what's happening in a fantastic uh, way, I'm paraphrasing, he said, look again. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a way to educate, it's a way to entertain, it's a way to tell our stories outside of ourselves so that we can hear it. Why would we cheat our kids out of that, right? Exactly. And, and why would we cheat our special needs kids out of that? They have as much or more need to have that as anybody else because it's a way to communicate. Yeah. 
Amazing. So tell us the website again where we need to go to donate and where we can find out more information. It's dancingdanproductions.com. Okay. And there's the longer clip there. Okay. And there's also a donate button that then takes you to the Art Attack website. Okay. And again, which is you, a nonprofit, so your donation right. is tax deductible. And, and w yes, which we all want. You can put that <laughs> on your taxes. But um, it's also a way of knowing that it's secure and safe, right. and and you're not having to pay a fee for it because almost any place else you'd have exactly. to pay. Part of your fee would go to people who aren't doing the thing that you want done. Right. Remarkable. So we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more with you about stuff that you you're doing and have done, and and how this came to be. Okay. How how you came to be the the person that said I'm gonna I'll do this? How you got to the point where you were teaching a class and had two uh, girls with different needs in the class? Excellent. So, all right, stick with us. More with Dance and Dan after these messages. Inclusion is everything. Feeling like we have a place where we belong, and when I say we, I'm first and foremost a mother, a mother of a child on the spectrum and not, and gym owner and now founder of carrying this to families who need it as well. My son is extremely hyperactive. Getting him to calm down is a very difficult task. So the idea of Brock the Spectrum Dream where he could just go and run and play and do all these fun things without any kind of worries and just go, go, go and bring down that energy. It just it helps us so much at home. You know, in the home or at school, it's not acceptable, but this is the one place it is acceptable for the child to kind of be themselves and get it all out there and just really just be their, themselves. It's an amazing place where my son could go and be himself. Um, you get to meet other parents who are in the same journey as you are. I think the most popular aspect of it is how they include all children of all types. Not just all only learning disabled, lower functioning, moderate functioning, high functioning, and non-disabled. Uh, non People there are so friendly, everybody's like family, they always greet you with a smile. There's not one negative thing I could say about any of the employees, they're all absolutely amazing. I think every parent should walk in through those doors and see what an amazing gym it is. Now a diagnosis being one out of six kids are in some way or form affected with sensory processing disorder or autism. That's why We Rock Now is on the rise. People want to be a part of it. People know that they have a community there. They know that they can learn more information about things that they don't know themselves or that they can share, build friendships, and uh, basically get what you get in an OT facility, but it's not $150 an hour. It's 12 Welcome back. We are here with Dancing Dan Watt, and uh, you don't have a problem with me calling you Dancing Dan. That's what your website is, right? Exactly. Dancing Dan Productions. Exactly. So and there I, was, you, yes. You know who named me that? Who? B. Arthur. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How much do I love B. Exactly. Arthur? Exactly. Yes. Uh, I, I love B. Arthur uh, immensely. Uh, we were just talking about that right now. I'm doing <laughs> yeah. a one-woman show, but years ago, somebody when I was thinner because I couldn't do it <clears> this way, but somebody was like, oh, Shannon, because I have a very deep voice, uh -huh. and they were like, you should do a one-woman show and do B. Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I love her, love her to death, but I'd have to get, I'd have to get slimmed down and stretched right. <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. She's amazing. So she named you Dance and Dan. What was that yeah. circumstance? Yeah, um, I, she did a fundraiser for me, uh -huh. and um, I then became her personal assistant. Wow. After she, yeah, after the show, she said, you're more organized than most of the people I worked with in New York. Yeah. But she has a son named Dan, and she had someone on her team named Dan. So oh, she sick. said she had to keep it 
<laughs> organized. Right. So I was dancing Dan. Dancing Dan. Dan. Yeah. Well, so that look, was, if you're going to be named by somebody, B. Arthur is pretty... From one of the know, best. You know, what can you do? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. like being knighted, exactly. I think, is what that yeah. is. So that's cool. Well, that brings me to, you know, you had mentioned before that you're a dancer and mm. that you're producing this film, um, Ballet for All Kids, a documentary, and we want to encourage people to donate on DancingDanProductions.com. Mm. But uh, how did you get to this spot? What's the da Dance and Dan story? Well, I was, a, you know, started out as a dancer studying in Cleveland and in, in, in New York, and then I moved out here to, you know, follow the dream. Yes. And I got in a, um, a dance company uh, called On Our Toes. It was a touring company through the Music Center downtown. Mm -hmm. And it was also, it, it was one of their educational shows, so we would go to schools and, um, and all that, and all that kind of stuff and have workshops afterwards. So I was always around kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was on stage once and I, I helped with the lighting cues um, before the show opened. And they brought up like the green lights and they were supposed to be blue. So I'm dancing and I'm like, they're in the wrong cue. Mm -hmm. And I kept dancing, but I thought, oh my gosh, I had crossed over to being a producer uh, because I was performing but I was more your concerned head was thinking right about that. Yeah. so that was where the journey started uh -huh. and then I thought you know I, I can't perform anymore because it's no longer you know my passion is has switched to the right. other side right um, so that was the first thing and then I started teaching at the South Bay Conservatory and uh -huh. put, and I put together their uh, dance program and then the musical theater program for them and I did a, a summer camp uh, created this musical theater three-week summer camp and that's where you know I taught jazz one through five and then right. had a company um, and then but I always wanted to work in film and television uh -huh. so I then took the leap I thought well I either do it or don't mm -hmm. and I sent out my resumes to a few places and Columbia Pictures <laughs> hired me Lovely. and I was like huh <laughs> I, you know but they were like well they said well you're so organized. You produce theater. <laughs> you you know you yes. have your your schedule. You hire. You audition. You do everything. We're just gonna take it and put yeah, it over here. Do here. you want to try it? I was like, okay. So I started out as an assistant in the development department uh -huh. and worked there for five years. And then Simon Cowell opened um, a scripted TV and uh, movie uh, department uh -huh. here in LA. And I went to work with him, and he is an amazing man, everybody, let me tell you. He, he is a such fan. a giving, I'm he, a he is truly amazing. Um, and while I was there, I worked on the movie This Is Us, which uh, is the One Direction documentary. Yes. And there I met Morgan Spurlock, uh, who is my idol now. Right. And is a mentor and a friend. Quite the and documentary. Yeah. Documentarian, I guess, is the yeah, word. Yeah, he did. Right? Super Size Me was the one that most know where he. Yes, ate but the, several more that he's right, done now. But right. the, you started to say the the fast food thing. We right. Changed the way we all looked at fast food. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I worked with with him on that move on that movie, and he was just so, always so positive and upbeat, and I just an inspirational. Yeah. And when I went home, all I would watch is his show on CNN or Lisa Ling or the History Channel. And I thought, I'm putting my energy in these scripted movies, which are great, right? but all I watch is this. Right. I love the human story. I love yeah. following people and, and I love talking about how they got where they were or what, what, what they're doing now. So I texted him and I said, do you have time to talk I he I said I I think I want to make the jump and do a documentary and he was actually this is how great he is he was actually at Sundance going from one movie to the other he had 15 minutes and uh, he called me on that walk uh, from one studio to the other that's awesome. and he said okay you're gonna do it. he said I'm here for you that's awesome. and he goes you know, make sure your your first one or two are some something that you can answer any question about. It's right. got to be your passion. Build your foundation. And he said, I guess you're a producer. <laughs> and that was it. I was yes. like, oh, I guess I am. Amazing. I mean, it, it, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then I, like I said, then I did the, the research of, yeah. of what I wanted to do and, you know. Yes. 
and it led me to the school, Ballet for All well, Kids. And I love the fact that, it, you know, I always say something's poking you. Yeah. When something pokes you creatively and you can't get away from it, you know, you got to turn around and, and face it down, right? Right. And those two girls in your dream were poking you and saying, it's time, somebody has to tell our stories, and it's you. Yeah. You need to tell our stories through these other kids. Right. Um, but I think that that's amazing. And, and I... Ha you know, I recently... Uh, we were, I met you at Aut yeah. Fest. Uh, where we were watching a wide variety of films that have to do with autism. And you want to talk about an immersive weekend of watching films and seeing all the different ways that a story can contain autism and inform the world. Right. And, and watching the audience reactions. And, and I have to say that the big film for me this year that happened to win for Best Documentary at Autfest but it had already won for, as far as I was concerned because mm -hmm. I watched it and that's all I could talk about for two weeks was <laughs> Dina. And if you yeah. haven't seen Dina, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, it is the, I, I went to friends who don't know anything about autism and said, you need to yeah. watch this film. It is so entertaining and it is so human and it is so powerful to see this woman's story. Uh, so I love that you're doing a documentary about dance because we need to see that. We need right. to see that. And I think who better than you to do this? Uh, cuz you you are the anointed, you are you've been tapped, you were poked. And I and I also think what it will make this different is because I was a dancer. Yeah. So it it's when when we're filming I have a different perspective and a different yeah. eye. You know, I have the cameraman there and, and the crew, and I'm like, what? do me a favor. Why don't you lay on the floor and let them dance over you? And he's like, what? <laughs> I go, trust I me. That. I'm like, just let them jump over you. And he's yeah. like, okay, and he lays right. down. Or, he, you know, and I said, we'll get their feet because we'll get the, we'll see. Like any, any dancer, you have your turnout, and you're working yeah. and you're working. And I said, so why not document one of the girls' feet? As she gets better and better, oh, so it was, you know, so and good. he was like, "I never thought of that." I'm like, "I know, that's why because, I'm here." Because you're dancing, Dan, and that's yeah, exactly. why you're the person yeah. who has to make this movie. I just love it. So again, we want to say the website is dancing, Dan. So is it dancing with a G or no, just dancing? No, G. Okay, dancing. Okay, so we need to dancing Dan, Dan Productions dot com dot com. Fabulous! I can't wait until you're premiering. You have to make sure that we know about that. Oh, we'll of course, of course. Fabulous. Great. Thank Thanks. you so much for being here and for doing this important work. Oh, and thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are welcoming all the folks from Camp Ed. This is the soft launch of the Ed Asner Family Center, and so we're going to be talking more about the arts and individuals on the autism spectrum and a really spectacular camp experience that's available to only a few this summer, but they have spots available. So stay tuned, Camp Ed coming up next. We are here at the Los Angeles Zoo. We've got quite a group here. I've got my son, Jem, Mike from the A-Word and Jack Riley, star of the A-Word and Jessica. We've got a whole crew of people and we're gonna take a tour around the LA Zoo and see some exciting animals. Sound good, you guys? Yeah. What are the safety rules though? Who do you have to stay next to? Daddy and D Dad. So remember what we talked about, that every time you do something good, I'm going to write it on my hand. When you get 35 of these, what are you going to get? Three hours of dancing. Yes, it's not a secret. You can tell people. What kinds of things do you need to do to get a mark on my hand? Being kind. And good listening. Jem, can you show them where the, where the um, chimpanzee is? Can you point it out to him? Show Jack Riley. Tell us what your responsibilities are here at the LA Zoo. I am the manager of volunteer programs at the Greater Los Angeles Zoo Association. I, I oversee the docents, the student volunteers, the general volunteers, and community service volunteers. Give us an overview of what kinds of things people can see at the zoo. 
There are lots of lots of animals to see. We have a lot of endangered. We are participate in a lot of conservation programs, and we offer a lot of education programs for our community, for uh, school groups, for members, uh, special needs. What kinds of accommodations can you make when somebody has specific issues? Uh, we have our special needs outreach program, and where we have a van that goes out into the community, and we bring a handful of animals to facilities that can't quite get to the zoo. So that could be a school, that could be a retirement community, that could be a hospital, uh, and there are some court courthouses that we visit as well. We bring a couple animals and we talk about them and it's kind of a fun experience. Um, so that's our outreach program. And then on grounds, we also have uh, tours and we offer special needs tours for people catered to their needs. We have our petting zoo, so you can go and you can pet some goats. We're here with From Autism Live and we were wondering if you could tell us what it's like to be a goat in the zoo. Really? And then we have our condor rescue zone, so you can go in and pretend you are a condor, or you could be a biologist, or you could be a vet, and it's kind of fun. Thank you for all the work that you do here and for making it accessible for all of our kids. with Janet Jackson. Janet, tell us what your role at the zoo is. My role is a docent and we're volunteers. How did you learn all the things that you know? Well, that's the great thing about the Los Angeles Zoo. We have a special docent program. It's one of the most stringent ones in the in the country. Actually, it's UCLA accredited class. Well, it added so much to our visit to the zoo today. So I thank you for all your knowledge and, and all your giving to the community. Well, thank you because I have a special needs child too. And I think it's so important that they interact with animals and that helped my son when he was going through so much trauma that we saw that he was able to um, to grow and to expand a little bit and it just helped us as parents because we had a tool to use and we saw the love and the, and 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 the care that he was able to bring out just by touching animals and being around animals because there is no judgment there amen to that yeah. well thank you for paying it forward because you are I definitely saw you doing that today. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you for being here. What was hard for you guys today at the zoo, do you feel? Um, to be completely honest, I was about to say um, this is the easiest, best outing I can recall. My concerns are... Uh, I think we're sort of past elopement, but it's, uh, it's always on my mind when it's just with the two of us out in a, you know, you can get 20 feet away if it's busy and be lost, you know, uh, be, be misplaced. But nothing like that happened today. Um, there were a lot of people helping me, of course. It was interesting for me because Jem hasn't been here since he was three, like right after we started therapy, and I remember that was hellish, the day that we were here. Sometimes I don't notice the progress until we're out someplace like this. Do you feel like that's true too? Yes. Today I was actually comfortable with him being 15, 20 feet away, and even if he wasn't holding uh, just anybody's hand or anything, I was comfortable, and that's, uh, that, that's a new feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched that and I said, man, there's no way we could have done that at that age. So he's doing really well. And I was so engaged by how Jack Riley is so aware of the circumstances around him. He's really doing great. Yeah, he, thank you. He's curious. He's, um, and he's just learned a lot. I mean, I, and I can't give enough credit to uh, Miss Jessica. Um, no disrespect to any of our other therapists, and she's been with him for the whole time. So that's a constant in his life, and uh, I dread the day when she's not. <laughs> it's always amazing. I, you know, we had our rock star on our team. There's always one therapist that just becomes a part of your family forever. What would you say to parents who are afraid to do it even with an aide? Um, I understand your fear, because um, I've always had it. Um, but sometimes they surprise you. Uh, I know it's called a spectrum for a reason, and my son is not like any other son or daughter, and so I can't advise you on what may or may not happen. Uh, we were always worried about transitions. They're getting better because we do it, and explain what is expected before you get here. That's a one, uh, That was a hard lesson for me to learn, but every time I don't explain them the, to him the expectations, um, I have more problems, I have more transitional issues, but when he knows what transitions he's going to face that day, he handles it. So my advice would be talk it out, but come do it and, and uh, come again even if it's a horrible experience, because it might be. 
you got to do it the first time before you can do it the second time. So. I think in general, I mean, you know, I explained the expectations here and we carried it out of my hand. I agree with you. It's super duper important. I think it's good for us too because then we know what we're expecting too. Yeah, and they've e engaged each other a little bit, which I was very uh, happy to see. Thank you so much for coming and doing this play date with us. We had a really great time. Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it and uh, it was just a great experience. I can't wait to tell my wife how well he did. So. And let's do it again sometime. Okay, anytime. Okay. Go to the zoo. Um, and Johanny, so let's have a conversation. I saw that you responded and uh, let's have a conversation. Think about like four or five things that you either are working on or that you know that you want to work on and then we'll come up with some lessons. Uh, and think about what activities your, your child likes and in which activities you want your child to like. Does your child already like swimming? Are you people who go to the beach or go to the pool or are you into museums or you want to be into museums but you're not yet? Because I can help you to figure out how to make that the exciting thing. Uh, okay, so we also have uh, a couple of comments and questions here. That guy wrote it and said, Hi, I was wondering what your opinion on becoming a chef as someone with Asperger's high-functioning autism would work. And I want you to know that there are lots of chefs that are individuals who are somewhere on the autism spectrum. Um, so what it really depends upon, um, I will tell you quite honestly, is passion. And because if you w want it bad enough and there are things that you're willing to learn and be flexible and go, okay, I'm good at this, I'm not good at that, I'm going to play to my strength, but I'm willing to work on the thing that I'm not good at, um, we all can be better uh, at, at whatever it is that we're doing. So absolutely, I think, you know, we're getting ready to do an interview with all the people from Camp Ed, and one of the things that they have on the agenda this summer is doing culinary lessons. Um, and they have a pretty amazing chef uh, who is a chef to the stars who consults with them. Um, so uh, Art Smith, who was... Uh, very famously, Oprah Chef is one of the people who consults and is part of helping them to help younger kids on the spectrum to learn how to cook. But absolutely, I would tell you, it's absolutely doable. But there are you are going to run into stumbling blocks, as anyone would, and perhaps more, depending on what your particular deficits are with high-functioning autism. Now, uh, Elena wrote in in support of you, and she said, I was the, uh, that I, I guess she was working as a chef, and she said, I was the only one working holiday weekend. Other workers started heckling, heckling me how worthless I, I was at washing dishes, got fired from three jobs in one year, don't, didn't know I was ASD. Hopefully times have changed. You know you're ASD. Don't let experience hold you back. And first of all, I want to say, I'm sorry that that happened to you. That's just not appropriate. It isn't appropriate for anyone to be heckling anybody else at work. Unfortunately, that kind of thing happens. Um, and there are steps that we can take to prevent it from happening again. But when it's happening, it's hard to make it stop. Um, I don't know what's wrong with some people. I, honestly, I don't. Um, but I think that time and experience, hopefully people grow. And I'm talking about the people who heckled you. Um, for all of us, there are obstacles along the way and things that we have to get over, things we have to get under, things that we have to go around and things that we just have to walk through. And I absolutely believe if you have a dream of something that you want to do, that it's important to give you the right tools to be able to do it, right? And you wouldn't go and become a chef without your set of knives, right? And knowing how to properly and safely use your knives. But I also think, too, that there are other tools that you can be given of how to work with people socially, how to read their expression to know when they don't, uh, are not in the same place that you are, when they're not happy with what you said. Uh, I, I don't want to say who, but I, I was with a, a wonderful person who's on the autism spectrum not that long ago in a group of people. And he said something that was impeccably honest and it was totally coming from his heart. It just was so bone to the honest and it wasn't in a forum where people are used to that. And it was very interesting to me because everybody kind of went, oh, because it was so honest and it wasn't complimentary, let's say that. And, and there was a moment and my friend who's on the spectrum 
saw that something had happened and he said, what happened? What did I say? Did I say something that was inappropriate? I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. And then later he and I were able to have a conversation and I said, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. In fact, you did something really right. You spoke your truth and then you saw that people were having a reaction to it and you said, my intention is not to offend, which I think opened up a, dis a bigger discussion. Um, but his ability to recognize and go, what, what, something just happened here. What was it? Because um, the last thing I wanted was to offend. That saved any potential issue, right? So that's a tool to have. So I, I just want to say, go for, go for it. Make sure that you give yourself time to get the tools. And if you find, like, let's say you sign up to go to a culinary school and you find that it's a little too hard for you because there's social issues at the school, be kind to yourself, talk to somebody at the school and say, what can we do? What can I do? Because there's always somebody who will give you coaching on the side to help you to be able to make it happen. When there's a will, there's a way, my friends. All right, uh, we're, we can't wait too long. It's time for Camp Ed. So let's take a break and come back with Camp Ed. Don't go anywhere. Do you provide care services to someone with autism? Recently, more and more children are being diagnosed with the condition and getting the support they need as awareness grows. But what happens to these children as they grow up? It's estimated that over half a million youth with autism will turn 18 in the next decade, and they'll be faced with a very difficult reality. As children with autism grow up, their services start to disappear or become very difficult to access. Things like medical care, mental health counseling, vocational training, and more all services that are still desperately needed. The loss of support that youth with autism face as they grow up is so severe that it's referred to in the autism community as falling off a cliff. Adults with autism need the same level of support they had as children to avoid falling off the services cliff. Introducing Skills Living, the web-based software designed specifically to help transitioning youth and adults with autism so they can avoid the cliff and instead fly to success. With Skills Living, help your learner with autism develop the skills they need in all the critical areas of adult life, including self-control, planning, and problem solving, effective communication, performing life skill tasks for independent living, acquiring and maintaining employment or other meaningful activities, developing and maintaining social skills and relationships, accessing transportation and public services, and being safe. Skills Living includes a comprehensive assessment, a data collection mobile app, behavior intervention plan builder, and automatic progress reporting. It also provides a complete curriculum addressing 16 key areas spanning the entire range of functioning adulthood. Skills Living is easy to use and can be implemented by schools, parents, and autism service providers. Call or click today for your free demo and see how Skills Living can help your learner with autism avoid the cliff and instead reach their fullest potential. Skills Living. Wish. Learn. Become. Welcome back to Autism Live. Boy, do I have a crew assembled here and more to come later. Starting over here, we have Joanne Lara from Autism Movement Therapy and Autism Works Now. Love her. Garth Herberg from Spectrum Laboratories. You know how much I love them. And of course, the fabulous and wonderful Nava Paskowitz. Thank you. And everybody representing, tell us, that are on drum roll. Camp Ed. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> there we which go. Which is our, um, it's kind of like our soft start to start the um, Ed Asner Family Center. And I give full credit to this young man who talked me into um, getting things together and, and um, I got the best team that, that anybody could ask for. And we're gonna have this wonderful like fame. We're gonna bring fame to that. special needs. And um, it's going to be a camp unlike any camp I've ever seen for my kids. Okay, so, so this is happening this summer. In fact, this it's summer. happening very soon. Yes, we're going to start July 9th. Okay. Five days a week from 10 to 3. We're going to also offer aftercare from 3 to 5 for an additional cost. But okay. um, it's, um, it's a three uh, one-week sessions. And um, it's July 9th to July 27th. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna tear this down and put it back together so that people can have the information about this amazing camp. Joanne, let's start with you. This is not 
just a special needs camp. Talk to us about what this camp is. I know, we're happy to say this is an inclusive camp. Camp Ed is inclusive in that we are embracing the dynamics of the entire family. If you have one or more children and you want to take them to one place for the summer for a camp, Camp Ed is your place. We want to let the message be out there that we are an inclusive best practices camp and that the center is also going to be an inclusive environment. We're taking care of the entire family. Which is amazing. That's where we all need to get in life. And so many mm -hmm. of you have written in and said, why isn't there a camp where my kid can go exactly. and, and my other kids can go to and that they're seeing behavior modeled, which is the direction that we want to go, right? Right, yes. And getting the best teachers, doing the most creative things, giving them a chance to flourish in an environment in which they are fully accepted. That's I right. think so many times with ESY, with, with my experience, is that you have um, some of the kids who get into like kind of a, a pool and they tend to regress during the summer. And so to have this model, um, you're not having the same experience you ha would have in some of the other special needs camps where they're just you know in this one kind of mm. uh, bubble. They're, yeah. they're getting the experience of these uh, neurotypical uh, siblings. Yes. And the parents are not schlepping all over the world. Also research shows that the data supports the fact that our students with behavioral, some kind mm -hmm. of a behavioral issue, which if they're on the autism spectrum, they have some kind of a behavioral issue that they step up to the plate with models that are typical models. Right. And I've seen it time and time again, not only in LA Unified, when I taught in LA Unified School District for 10 years, but also in my own dance and movement mm -hmm. classes. And you see that a lot of those behaviors just fall away because yeah. that's not what is expected of them mm -hmm. and that's not accepted here. Exactly, exactly. And then there's the other component to it for the siblings, mm -hmm. what an important opportunity for them to be with other siblings, to be with people who get it. Absolutely. Because there are considerations that are in their lives that are difficult, right. and to be with other peers who understand, my brother, my sister's a little mm -hmm. bit different, right. that, that doesn't mean anything negative, right. and I'm still me, mm. I'm separate from, so wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Yes. And then on top of that, you're gonna be doing some pretty crazy crazy creative things, right Garth? Well, I mean, just, just as you would at any summer camp, it's about exposure and, and fun, and we're gonna be bringing a lot of different arts programming. So there's gonna be music classes, there's gonna be dance, mm -hmm. there's gonna be painting, um, acting. Um, just Drumming. A, drumming as well, yeah. and photography. There's, comic book. and comic book comic making, there's book. more than yeah. I'm, than I'm even so thinking of right now. about that. They're going to be really making their own comic yes. book, is that what yes. I hear? Yes. That's fascinating. And tell us about our artist, because she is really inspiring. Oh, Amy Fagan, yeah, who's um, doing the drawing and comic book making. She's wonderful. She just volunteered for Spectrum Laboratory this last year and did all of the artwork for all of our records, and it was fantastic. She's incredible. She's, she's also on the Spectrum herself and is a huge advocate, um, and it's just, I think she's really finding a calling with what we're doing. Shout out to Amy. Yes. For watching, we love you. Well, I mean, shout out to all of you because you're doing this yeah. right. And I think it's important that because we're bringing this into our fall programming and our forever home, um, we do have some element for the parents. So we do have um, Chris uh, Syed, who's our mental health um, director that you met, and she's going to come in twice a week and kind of give the kids a. Um, an assessment, not an assessment, but like a breakdown of how, how are they doing, what's going on, are there any issues? Like during, a soft assessment. Yes, a yeah. soft assessment. Mm -hmm. And um, most importantly for me, I'm so excited to bring in um, on Wednesdays when the kids are going to do their field trips, the parents are going to come in and drop their children off and hopefully stay for the whole day. So we're going to have a parent appreciation day on Wednesdays. Wow. I'm going to have my friend John Sahakian doing his me meditation, mindfulness, and de-stress class. And um, John is amazing. John I've known is John amazing. for many years. He's amazing. And he's, been, and he's not hard to look at either. I'm just going to say no, that. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. And, um, so, and we're going to give them a beautiful lunch. And at the end of this wonderful day, we're going to have a very relaxed roundtable um, support group. And Chris is going to be there moderating. And she's going to get a, a kind of a uh, first kind of glimpse into how we're going to um, support our families in the fall forever home. So 
I'm very excited about that addition. Okay, so you mentioned that this is going to be in a place that's different than your Fall Forever yes. home. Where is the location uh, for this? Leo Beck Temple. Okay. Yeah, so which is a beautiful campus. Beautiful it's 11 acres. Campus. It's set right across from the Getty Center on the, the hills of the 405. Love um, it. Yeah, it's really, really lovely. Very nice outside campus as well as wonderful classrooms. It's wheelchair accessible. It's very friendly. We've actually been running Spectrum Laboratory classes there for some time mm -hmm. and just love it. Fabulous. And there are three separate weeks. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. talk about, because you color coded them. Yeah. I love that. I just, I love the idea of having the kids have some little element to be excited about every week. So we're going to, um, we're going to have the green week is our first week, red week is our second week, and blue week is our third week. And each week um, is, re uh, represents something that we're going to incorporate into our learnings. It's not going to be academic, but um, green week is going to be environmental and we're going to, um, do field trips that are connected to the outdoors and environment. I want the kids to wear a little green something every day. Um, Red Week is multicultural and around the world, and um, we uh, are going to do, um, again, trips that are um, associated with that. And then my favorite is the Blue Week, which we're all going to um, incorporate our family day and our parent appreciation day, and really all of us go to the beach. Love and it. really have a wonderful, um, which you're totally invited to come. <laughs> by the way. Um, and we're going to have a wonderful uh, family day, which and our Blue Week is um, all about the ocean and sea life. Love and that. And and Nava is an ocean baby. I am an Born ocean baby. The ocean, and I will the ocean. promise <laughs> this spot is alive that <laughs> next summer I have a wonderful group um, who I'm not going to announce yet. But next summer we're going to have a full summer camp. Full. Are you ready for that? Yeah, okay. bring it on. And we're going to have surf <laughs> instruction every single Ooh, week at wow. our base. Um, For those of you who don't know, Nava comes from surf royalty. Yes. Her entire family is surf royalty. <laughs> and, and Nava always talks about getting me surfing. And that's a thing that we would have to getting sell tickets to, right? Oh, we're doing to it. Me getting out it's of not that I can't even swim. Would you, would you teach me how to surf? I would, this summer, I'm going to teach you. But next summer, when I have but my. We can help. picture cool. Garth surfing. It's me, we have I've a done it before. I've it's really three ugly. women in my life who couldn't <laughs> swim. To surf. Were they as uncoordinated <laughs> and as Actually, large one as, was as my room much, is? much more. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. I, we would have to sell tickets to I that, right? It. That would be hilarious. Yeah, you know awesome. I have a six foot four board. Yeah. I grew, she was I grew a up surfing chick. Cocoa Beach. Oh, All right. Well, and and it's an amazing sport. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, and it's great I for our kids. I think water therapy. I mean, I dream I'm dreaming big now, but I'd like I'd love uh, in our forever home, and we're we're looking. And anybody who can help us find our forever home, we're really um, we're really looking for the perfect place for all of us to mm -hmm. to um, to live. And and we'll be open six days a week when we find that um, home. But I'd love to have a, a, pool, a pool one day. That's on and, the wish list. Mm -hmm. And may I mention also for our forever home, mm -hmm. we're also offering the transition program, the pre-employment skills to jobs training. Yes. And that's a big piece because that is something that we all need to start thinking about. Mm -hmm. And we also, not just hoping and a wishing and a you know prayer, we need to start the real act of teaching the pre-employment skills to job training. Absolutely. And we've been doing it with Autism Works now for mm -hmm. three years. We're going into our fourth year. Susan will be there as yeah. the director. Susan's going to be. And we've had a lot of success with the program. So we'll, we'll also be, in other words, reaching out to 17 and older mm -hmm. individuals. And we're going to talk in a minute because we're going to bring Matt in here, uh, Matt Asner, to talk about mm -hmm. the center mm -hmm. and what the whole dream is behind this. But let's cycle back to the camp for just a second because I yeah. want to make sure that people understand this is this is really an opportunity. Yes. Our community has not had this kind of a situation done like this ever. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want to encourage people, if you're in the area, and you've been a little bit like, ah, I don't know, mm -hmm. summer is upon you and I don't know what to do. Now is the moment. You need to register. You can't just, you know, decide day of, right? Because well, they need to be ready for you. This is the only uh, thing that we have to be clear about is that because it's our first experience and I'm a paranoid Jewish mom, <laughs> we're only going to allow 20 students per week. So we are very limited space available. Right. Um, I did want to clarify that this is not just a camp for autism. It's a camp for all abilities. That's okay. right. And, you know, if you've looked at all in the Los Angeles area for a camp, you know how expensive that they can be. They've worked really hard to get the price down mm -hmm. for you to something that's really reasonable.
reasonable. You're not going to get daycare for less than this, no. right? No. And to have something that's really enriching your kids. So price is $500 a camper. Includes lunches, snacks. Five hundred a week. Five hundred a week. That's mm -hmm. right. Five hundred a week, mm -hmm. and it, and you know that going rate is double that. Yeah. Oh. More than double yes. that. It's you know. So this is an amazing price point for what you're getting. You do need to register, and it's a one hundred dollar mm -hmm. non refundable thing to register and get mm -hmm. on that list to hold your to be, spot. To hold I, your spot. I need people to understand that if I don't if I don't hold your spot, then I'm saying no to other people that's right. that are on the waiting list, and that's and not that's fair. only fair. But you do not have to do all three weeks. You can decide yeah. to do one week or two weeks mm -hmm. or all three weeks okay. so that they're all a la carte. Um, again, the Green Week, which is happening July 9th through the 13th, that's the Green Week environmental mm -hmm. focus. Mm -hmm. The Red Week is the 16th through the 20th of July, and that's the week where they're gonna, you're going to incorporate cultural, all the multi yeah, diversity. Cultural, yeah, right? Yeah. And then the Blue Week, which is the Sea Life Week, which sounds like I a total yeah. gas, that's the 23rd through the 27th. Mm -hmm. But where do they go to register, Nala? Mm -hmm. They go on to our website, which is www.edasnerfamilycenter.org slash camp hyphen ed. Okay. But if they just go to the website, there's probably a button that they can push there to is. get there to register. There so, um, and you've got the website right there, you guys. So many things that you're going to be doing. You said uh, the, the cost includes lunch and snacks. Mm -hmm. There's dance classes, which are autism movement therapy, right. which is, you know, a, that alone is worth the price of admission, right? And mm -hmm. Nava said fame, and you know, I danced with Louis yeah. Dacco. No, and I, I, I love that. And so that it idea. really is that idea of Absolutely. a collaboration at the end as well. So a performance collaboration, oh, there you go. multimedia. Yeah. But I also want people to realize that, you know, we've known for a while, research shows that when you're crossing the midline, that cognitively things yeah. connect for our kids. Mm -hmm. And so... I love that it's a dance class and that we talk about how great it is for them to express themselves, but there's a whole cognitive component to your autism movement therapy that cannot be underspoken. So there's that, music classes, which I imagine you're gonna be involved yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm speaking. actually really excited about it because I'm bringing in um, Lucas Saluski, who is an artist that we've been working with. He's also gonna be part of the staff and assistant for, for that class, engineering, oh, and helping us produce. So um, that class will be doing a lot of recording, um, a lot of just fun music making. It'll be very accessible for everyone. Um, and we should walk away from the camp with a couple new songs. Yeah. Which is amazing. And we have other kids who are our CIT this That's year. That's right, Ian uh, Stanley. Ian Stanley, uh, amazing. Spencer Hart. And so when you say CIT, what are you Counselor talking about? Counselor in training. Counselor yeah. in training. Yeah. So we are okay. very excited to um, bring in um, you know our families and and really include the kids in a in a higher level so they're not mm -hmm. just create that um, stepping stone you know, i see you're walking students. your talk that's right. we're I mean, walking our talk we're walking. and not only that and that's wonderful for those kids and they <clears throat> need and deserve that opportunity mm -hmm. but you're also setting up role models for Absolutely. our younger kids who say ah when I'm older yeah, and I show responsibility, that, I get to be that That's too. Right. Mm, and our yeah, kids yeah. need that right. 100%. to understand. I get to move up the chain too. Did we um, did we point out that it's ages 10 to 25? We did not. No, we, we didn't. did not point yeah. that out. Um, so glad it, you I, well, I mean, it's a little more sophisticated, some of the classes. Mm -hmm. So um, we did have the youngest group be 10 mm -hmm. years old. and. Okay. Um, but 10 to 25, yeah. I, a whole bunch of people just went, oh my goodness, I'm included in yeah. this, and yeah. they didn't think that they yeah. were. Right. So that's amazing. And then do you, are, are the 10-year-olds going to be in classes with the 25-year-olds, or it's all going to be? We're, they're all going to be broken up into... Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, kind of like um, what we've been doing in Spectrum Laboratory, where there's a pretty big mix of ages. Yes. Uh, but what's really nice is we're dividing it up. We have enough teachers to come on board to make each class pretty small. There so we're go. not expecting more than five, six campers within one class at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that brings up an interesting point. What Do you guys have an estimate of what your ratio is gonna be of adults to campers? Oh, including <sighs> volunteers as well. It's 
going to be about two to one. There you go. At yeah. the most. That's I mean, that's amazing. important. That's it is, important it is important. I just, I, I have to say, I love all of you, and I love that you're doing this, and I think it's super important, and I think that people better start taking advantage of it because yeah. you're, you're going to get closed yeah, well, out, well, which it's not going to go. That's our cap this year. Right. That's that's what it is for this year, but as this grows and yeah. expands, next well, we're only doing three more. weeks this year. Yes. So next year, God willing, I want to have, you know, the full summer camp. There you go. But 20 campers, 20 campers per, per week. week. Yeah. So if, if you're looking for a camp situation, you got to get on it today. And again, the websites that you're going to go to, Samantha, let's throw it up there for them again. So go there, and then you'll see that there are places where yes. you can click to register. It'll say Camp Ed to on the top menu, um, right um, on your top little middle thing and above Ed's bald Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so definitely do that. I didn't get all the way through. Mm -hmm. So music classes, media classes, culinary classes. Karen Howard is going to do an incredible oh, drum music, so drum uh, opening. And that is so good for yeah, our Yeah, she's kids. amazing. Oh, my God. She's Eddie. Best. Eddie is, loved her class this year. Oh, so. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So culinary classes, you guys are going to be cooking, which is amazing mm -hmm. for our kids as well. The comic book making, which we talked about briefly, acting classes photography classes, support groups, field trips, and parents' day. And, that, and for the parents, you're inviting them to come on Wednesday. If a it's parent part has of their to tuition. Work, if a parent um, has to work, is it okay if they don't come on Wednesday, or is it required? Not at all. It's, I mean, it's just a, a, um, something that I'd like to offer them. And it's included in the price? It's included the in the price. You guys, um, you're never going to get if, that. If, <laughs> if they can't make it, yeah. then I have no problem if they send... Um, their caregiver, their grandmother, hmm. anybody who they feel would would benefit from some spiritual and and um, you know groups a, gr a yeah. support group right. setting. And we all need that. Yeah. We all like if you can work it so that you can take a Wednesday and have it off to do yeah. this, it would behoove you. I know sometimes it's like, well, you know, it's the job, right? Yeah. You gotta, yeah. Gotta, you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Roof over the head, but um, but this is an amazing an amazing. I'm so Thank proud so of all much. of you Thank guys you. for getting this Thank together and, yeah. and, and doing it right. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited. So get your kids registered. Yes. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to bring Mr. Matt Asner in here to talk a little bit about uh, how the two of you came up with this idea and this legacy yes. that for Ed Asner that he is leaving. So stick with us. We're going to be back in just a few minutes. Parent to parent, one of the most frightening things there is is when your child wanders away or elopes. This is when they leave an area without permission. And we know science has shown that over 50% of children on the autism spectrum will engage in this kind of behavior. But we don't have to just accept it as fact. There are things that we can do to teach our children how to appropriately ask when they want to go someplace. But before we can teach, we have to know why they're doing it. Are they wandering away to go to something or are they wandering away to escape something? Really important that we know that. And once we do know that, then we can put in place these really effective teaching strategies. I want to remind you though that if your child is engaging in this kind of behavior, it's really important to work with an expert. Get professional help. They'll be able to effectively figure out why your child is doing it and put an intervention in place that's effective. And when you stop and think about it, there's nothing more important than keeping our children safe. You might be asking yourself, a VIP, what on earth is that? <laughs> Welcome back to Autism Live. Thank we are so here bad. with the Paskowitz Asners. We have Matt oh. Asner and Nava Paskowitz Asner. Hello, you should again. hyphenate too. That would be fun. I uh, begged what? him to do that. That's <laughs> the actual tradition in Hawaii. Is it? In Hawaii, when you get married, you the man hyphenates his name as well and well, ask uh, how many seconds he thought about it how many seconds exactly two. did you think about it maybe one or two yeah okay but i am look, everyone that Your name knows is me pretty, knows yeah. that i'm a paskowitz asner there well and i said it <laughs> i listen i asked my husband to hyphenate too and he didn't either but um, everybody knows he's a penrod miller too so there yeah. we go okay. in any case we have lots to talk about yes. uh because you guys are, are You've got something really amazing that's been a wish and a dream for your family, Definitely. a legacy for your dad. 
uh, the Ed Asner mm -hmm. Family Center. Yes. Uh, an amazing thing that has now come to fruition in this summer. You're you're launching with your soft open with Camp Ed. Yeah. And we just talked a little bit about that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to just have Matt come in and talk a little bit about this is really important for your family and for your dad. Your dad's wanted this for a while, yes? Absolutely. And you know what? It's, it's interesting because we're in a place right now where people... It's summer. We'll talk about the camp a little bit, then we'll talk about yeah, the summer. But, sure. Uh, or the the, uh, the center. But um, it's summer, and people don't have a really, I don't think they have a lot of quality places to bring their kids during mm -hmm. the summer. And, and you know, what, what Joanne and, and Nava and Garth were talking about earlier about the inclusion aspect of it, you know, a whole family could go to camp there. Yeah. And that's the most important part of this whole thing, is that, you know, we're, we want people to get together and be creative and uh, work on themselves and really come out of this feeling like a million bucks and um, and I think it you know the it, it's going to translate in other areas of life it'll translate in employment it'll translate in how they work with other people uh, it's a very important I think part of what we're doing um, and um, when I was younger um, I uh, you know I had terrible learning disabilities when I was younger. And I did I was, not know that. I am yeah, kind of, you know, I, it's true. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the, back then, a long time ago, <laughs> when I was very young, um, there were not a lot of uh, programs out there that could help someone like me. And, you know, I probably was on the spectrum as well at that point. Um, uh, and, uh, but it was, it was difficult for me because, um, my my issues were uh, that I just didn't I, I wasn't putting it together in school and they didn't have the tools to get it, me to put it together in school so uh, luckily my my mother I'll give her most of the credit mm -hmm. um, saw to it that I went to a, a school that could address these issues and I was able to kind of write the ship and I uh, ended up going to a college prep school and, and graduating and you know, being valedictorian of the class, and that it was a success story. It was a wonderful success story. But I'm just mentioning this because um, if I had had arts classes at an early age, if I had had um, the ability to put everything together through art and certainly Visual. through, through yeah. yeah, and and, and if, if my family had had a place where we can all go together to have mental health services and mm -hmm. to come together as in that way, I think um, it would have been a very different... Uh, much less of a struggle for me, mm -hmm. and I and I think that um, that in itself right there um, has lit the fire in me to um, to give kids and families the opportunity to have a life together uh, of healing yeah. and uh, of creativity and of art and of and of you know health under one roof. And that's that's the whole premise. So I know it's a kind of a long-winded way of getting there, but. Yeah. But you know, I, I think we get so wrapped up in in um, in uh, what we have to do in our lives, and and it's it's such it's such a difficult to get a diagnosis of anything is so difficult to handle as a person and as, certainly as a parent. Mm -hmm. And I think I think we get wrapped up in our own lives and how much baggage we have, and we don't think about um, taking care of ourselves yeah. as much as we should. Uh, or, as we a feel, or we feel guilty to take care of ourselves because oh, we think that, you know, this huge uh, life-changing experience for your child that you just want to protect them. It's not that you want to change them. You want to just protect them and make them happy and not struggle. You yeah. just want their lives to be easier. And for a parent, that becomes all-encompassing and to the point of your health. Absolutely. You and I know, you yeah. know, what happens when you have chronic stress in your life. And I think that um, to give the parents the ability to say, hey, I'm gonna be a better advocate, I'm gonna be a stronger parent, I'm gonna be able to take care of my other children if I take care of myself first. And I think for me, because I, you know, I was a single mom with four kids, two, with, um, two on the spectrum, and um, really struggling. I mean, I had panic attacks 24 hours a day at one point 
because I was under so much stress um, financially and just not, uh, you know, n really unsure of how I could take care of Eddie at that point when he was tantruming 24 hours a day. And, um, and I really needed to talk to somebody. I yeah. needed that support and I couldn't afford it. And for me, Matt's, Matt has in, his inspiration, but my inspiration is that um, when I was working at the Chabad and I saw the support of the Chabad and their families and everything, it inspired me to say, wait a minute, we're, we're going at this the wrong way. There's a 80-90% divorce rate in special needs families and we need to take care and lift up the foundation of the family and not just the impacted child or teen or adult or whatever. We need to say, what can we do for this family? And a lot of times it would save marriages and maybe if not save the marriage, then at least allow these two parents to be able to work together to, for the betterment of their child who ha has um, autism or, or another um, something else. And, and I think it's, it's, you know, it's for us to say um, we're just going to focus on, on the children, I think it's, it's doing the, the community a disservice. Absolutely. And I think, I think uh, you know, my father has a very similar push for this. Mm -hmm. um, he was a young man uh, who I think looked at his life or was going through life not knowing what his future would be, um, was most likely going to stay in Kansas City and, and work with his brother at the uh, uh, Asner uh, scrap, scrap metal yard. Okay. Um, and... Um, he, um, he was introduced to acting. And through performance and through um, that beautiful, Outlet. dramatic mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. he was able to produce self-confidence and become someone that he really wanted to be. And I think that is what he wants to replicate. He right. wants to replicate, he wants to take the arts and there's so many amazing programs out there that are doing this already. So we kind of looked at that and said, why don't we just bring them in and have this kind of be this kind of beautiful um, experience for everyone where these amazing programs are all featured in one place. Yeah. Make a home. Make a mm -hmm. home. And so, uh, and I, I'll say, my dad would be the first person to tell you if he hadn't become an actor. I've asked him this once. I said, if you hadn't become an actor, what would you be doing now? And he said, he said the alternative is too horrible even to think about. Mm -hmm. Because acting was what he was meant to do. Mm -hmm. right. That was what he was meant to do. And it gave him the creativity and the self-confidence to go out there and kind of conquer life. And, uh, and I just want to say that what I think, there's so many things that I think are particularly beautiful about this. But especially, you know, People are bombarded in the first few years of autism, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then this this camp this summer is for ten to twenty five. Mm -hmm. You said, mm -hmm. and and I love that. I know that eventually you're going to expand to all ages. Absolutely. But to start with ten to twenty five, because around ten is usually the place where the family has settled into yeah. a routine, and mm -hmm. the self care isn't there. And we talk about the cliff that happens at eighteen, but there's a cliff at ten mm -hmm. too where it's like, okay, my life doesn't look like what I thought it was going to look mm -hmm. like. Where do I go from here? Yeah. yeah. And to create a home for those families to come to that is loving, mm -hmm. accepting, create something higher to yeah. work on and to grow so that there is still hope abounding and a place, an outlet for everybody is a really wonderful gift that you're giving to the community. I love the idea of just having some place that everyone can go and hang out after school and on the weekends yeah. and just you know the dads it's a hugely underserved um, market and to, to, for the dads to come and have a place have a cup of coffee in the cafe and just um, if they if they don't want to do a support group a lot of dads don't want that mm -hmm. they can speak to an MFT privately one-on-one -on -one. Um, I think it's it you know this is this is going to be more than a therapy center. This is going to be a community center. This is going to be um, a home away from home yeah. for people. And, I love it. And, and all of these areas, um, we're, we're seeing cut on a regular basis mm -hmm. from schools and, and from life. 
uh, I mean, in mental health, let, uh, let's just, you know, start right there. There's just, there's just, it's, we're just in, in, in denial that there's something yes. wrong here. Uh, there is something wrong uh, that, that we're not helping people. And um, it, 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 can, it can be so easy to start helping people just, just by, you know, having something like the center where people can go and, and just talk. And yes. And see other people surviving. Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes you just need to see, oh, somebody else is getting through this. Okay, I'm going to figure out how you're doing that. Well, it creates and a dialogue, doesn't behind. it? It does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it's amazing. You're starting this summer with Camp Ed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked a little bit about that before. But people, you're only taking 20 campers per week. Yeah. Yep. People need to get registered mm -hmm. immediately. Samantha, let's show them the website where they can go to get registered. It is $500 a week per camper, but that is all inclusive, lunch and snacks, mm -hmm. and the parents participating as well. So you're not going to beat that in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't know that with, you're going to beat that anywhere in the United the States. With the best programs already oh on the market. Gosh, I mean, yes. there is nothing like Spectrum Laboratories. There is nothing. Oh, Joanne Laura is a force uh, unto herself, but, but honestly. We're, it's... We really have a wonderful team together. And Nav is a force unto herself. Well, the two of you together. I made them <laughs> I made them sit the together floor. because we love to watch them together. We all get diabetes <laughs> watching this happy, happy couple, uh, which I, I adore. But uh, I want to go back to this because there are three separate weeks. You do not have to sign up for all three mm -hmm. weeks. You can do just one week. Or and two. Span. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a green week, red week, and blue week. The first week is green, July 9th through the 13th. Then red week is July 16th through the 20th. And blue week is 23rd through the 27th. And mm -hmm. you need to get a $100 deposit down to hold yep. your place for that 20. Spots are going fast. Mm -hmm. You need to call, register, not call. We don't do that anymore. We do everything online. Uh, <laughs> register <laughs> online to be able to do this amazing, amazing And classes. if your typical sibling is within 10 and 25 age range, they're welcome to attend as well. You've got to love that. You've got to yeah. absolutely love that. There's going to be a lot more happening at the center that you guys are going to be back and talk more yes, about more Yes, we're going to have so many. I mean, what I'm excited about is we're going to have um, a real job training um, uh, program with Autism Works now. Amazing. And I've seen with my own eyes um, the work that they're doing. And to have so that nice. in within our home is, is very exciting. So this is just the beginning, but it's just a great beginning. beginning. Camp Ed, really want to encourage people, get yourself registered mm -hmm. for this. 10 to 25 is the age range, mm -hmm. um, and it's starting in just a few weeks, so you need to get registered. And our hours are possible. from 10 to 3 every day, every weekday. And um, we have some um, um, aftercare from 3 to 5 if, if need be for an additional cost. Okay. So uh, great things to keep in mind. Thank you guys for all Thank the work you for that you're doing us. and, and this coming. wonderful we idea. Uh, you know you're always welcome here. This sh we want this to feel like home to you. It, guys, it does. So. It kind of feels like home. Okay, it should. It does. Uh, it does. It we we like had our first date here, basically. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. That picture that I posted the other day—that's literally my first experience on. Oh. Oh really? How yeah. funny! Oh, wow. I love and I'm that. looking like we've watched I'm this couple there. happen, the Brady Bunch of Autism. Uh, given everybody out there who isn't in a relationship hope because oh, there's uh, always hope. It's all, there's, there is, there's, there's always, always hope. Right? There is. Isn't that what you always say to me? Hope there is our favorite four letter word. It is. Yeah. Uh, that is, and that is the truth. Right. Absolutely. And, and you know, I was watching Lord of the Rings the other day, and, yeah. and they say that. In, in oh, the, do they? Yeah, they say there's always hope. I've never there's a, I'm sorry, and Viggo Mortensen. My phone is right, going. There off. we go. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end anyway. We've got Just more coming up for you guys. So inappropriate. <laughs> That's so things happening right here. Uh, we've got more coming up. Uh, so stick with us. We'll be back with more. What is autism? 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 <laughs> I've been asking myself that for a very, very long time. Um, let me think about that one. <laughs> um, trying to, uh, just, um... Jeez, let me think. <laughs> oh, man, that's...
That's a big one. one. Yes. Uh, autism, uh, uh... Autism is a neurological disorder that affects many of our kids in different ways. It's a learning disability that affects the cognitive functions of the brain. A lot of people have the misconception that it's a disability and it's really not. I look at it as like a special gift. When one person thinks differently from another. It's an opportunity for everyone to learn to understand someone that's a little different than them. Autism is the ability to educate. They're given so much talent in different areas. To me, autism means a chance to be with and be around people you really care about. Autism is beautiful. It's a way of seeing the world differently. It's always unique, totally intelligent, and sometimes mysterious. Happiness that, that, that comes out of my um, son's um, hard work. It's a movement. Unpredictable. That's, That's right. right. Awesome. Love. The field I want to work in. Laughter. Fun. Joy. Autism is beautiful to me. I want you to remember these three words. There is hope. thank all of our guests that we had today. It's been a very exciting day. And I also want to let you know that this weekend there is an event, Stephanie's Day. It is one of our favorite days of the entire year. We uh, Autism Live is going to be there at Stephanie's Day. They're going to be roaming, doing a live feed on Facebook. So you can tune in on Facebook. I personally am not going to be able to be there on Saturday, but Samantha will be there, and she has a very special host of the walk through Stephanie's Day. Kobe Bird is going to be back in the saddle for us. I think it's going to be a really exciting day, so make sure that you check that out on Saturday. I don't know the exact time that they'll start the feed, um, but you'll get to see performances by The Miracle Project, some uh, performances uh, that are from that musical that I just went to last week that I've said it was just amazing. So I hope you'll check it out. Plus, there will be so much more, and you'll get a feel for the scope of Stephanie's Day and what an incredible event it is. So check that out on Saturday during the day. I'll be back here on Wednesday. And until then, please give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.